Sports anime are incredibly popular and a mainstay genre of anime that has truly grown to expand its repertoire. You name the sport and there's an anime about it. And if not, just wait, there definitely will be. From basketball, baseball, swimming, figure skating, gymnastics, even, well, whatever sport this is. The point is, there's no end to them. Sports anime are so appealing because of their large and varied cast of quirky and relatable characters, the stunning animation, exhilarating action, and even the surprising depth and roller coaster of emotions and its lovable overdramatics for every play. But we all know a sports anime is nothing without its intense rivalries. They benefit both competitors, with both characters acting as foils of one another to expose both of their flaws and help each other learn, grow, and motivate them both to improve rapidly. Friendly or not, rivalries are a common trope, especially in shonen, that keep us on the edge of our seats rooting for our faves. So today, we're counting down our top 10 sports anime rivalries from some of our favorite sports anime. Welcome to Cosplay FTW, your number one source for the latest lowdown on anime and manga news, updates, and analysis. Sit back, relax, and before we get into this video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell. Now, let's get into it. Starting at number 10, we have Ryoma Echizen and Kunimitsu Tezuka from Prince of Tennis. This series is a must watch for sports anime fans. Prince of Tennis is one of the most popular and successful sports anime of all time. It's a classic with an old school vibe. Here we have a player who's considered a genius of the sport, Ryoma. He's a pretty boy type whose arrogant attitude is the direct result of his terrifying skill. But there are walls that not even he can scale. And he finds that out after facing the captain of his own team, Tezuka. Tezuka is the stoic counterpart to Ryoma's cocky and arrogant persona and his skills in tennis speak for themselves. Without Tezuka, Ryoma wouldn't have developed his own style of tennis. Tezuka plays the dual role of a mentor and rival to Ryoma, encouraging him to become the pillar of his team, just as he had been while he was captain. If you need a rivalry as healthy and maybe just as bitter as Inui's special vegetable juice, Ryoma and Tezuka's is simply the best. Are you both a basketball fan and an anime fan? Then you're likely familiar with our next pick. At number 9, we have Taiga Kagami and Daiki Ayomine from Kuroko's Basketball. Kagami is known as the ace of Serin, and most importantly the light to Kuroko's shadow. But before Kagami was Ayomine, one of Kuroko's exes, ex-teammates that is, and a member of the Generation of Miracles, there's a whole list of parallels we can draw between Kagami and Aomine. For example, they're both considered powerful players and the ace of their respective teams, filling the same positions. Both of their play styles are based on NBA players, Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant. Both of their favorite foods are some variation of a burger. Both fit the airheaded jock trope and they even earned nicknames that highlight this, Bakagami and Ahomine. And well, Ahomine has pretty thin eyebrows, and Taiga got his eyebrows ripped out by Murasaki Bara. <laughs> well, the point is their commonalities instantly spark an interesting dynamic between the two. And had Kagami been in Japan at the time, he would have easily made it into the Generation of Miracles alongside Aomine. Aomine used to be very close to Kuroko, the same way Kagami is now, and back when he and Kuroko played on the same team, he was Kuroko's light. In fact, Aomine mocks Kagami early on in the series by claiming that his light is too dim to bring out the best of Kuroko's ability as a shadow. Kagami sees Aomine as a clear rival not only as a player but as Kuroko's light and beating him becomes Kagami's main driving force in the first half of the series, while initially seeing each other only as opponents. They gain mutual respect for each other, eventually Kagami who views Aomine as the pinnacle of basketball. Although they don't appear to get along on the surface, Kagami and Aomine still make it for a good match, as rivals and even as friends, if they'd stop bickering long enough to actually get to it. Coming in at number 8, we have Yuri Katsuki and Yuri Pletsky, also known as Yurio, from Yuri on Ice. 
Even though they share the same first name, these two couldn't be more different from each other. While Yuri is shy, self-deprecating, and humble about his skills, Yorio is brash and arrogant and knows exactly what he's worth. Even their initial appearances are polar opposites. Yuri starts off as soft, cute, and chubby, whereas Yorio is sharp and trim. These two become rivals when Viktor Nikiforov becomes Yuri's coach and Yurio follows him to Japan, demanding to know what is so special about Yuri and wanting Viktor to make good on his promise to coach him. Both Yuri start off competing for Viktor's attention and a chance to prove themselves to the competitive skating world. Yurio immediately dismisses Yuri as a rival at first. Yuri, meanwhile, admires Yurio's skill, especially at such a young age, and never once ridicules him or wishes him ill. Eventually, as Yuri starts to grow more confident in himself, Yurio starts recognizing his talent and ability, not only as an actual threat to his career, but as a worthy competition. He even becomes furious when he hears a rumor about Yuri retiring before the two of them can really go head to head. It doesn't take long after that for both Yuris to acknowledge each other as proper ice skating rivals, and even Victor comments that because of Yuri, Yurio has gained even more love and motivation for the sport. Next, we have number 7. Sena, Kobayakawa, and Sejuro Shin from iShield 21. This anime is the only sports anime so far about American football. The rivalry between its main character Sena and his opponent Shin is one of the most straightforward ones. Again, we have a theme of complete opposites. Sena is short and almost frail in build. Shin, on the other hand, is tall and muscular, really, really muscular. The manga even plays on his resemblance to Kenshiro from the Fist of the North Star, and if you don't know who that is, his iconic quote, you're already dead, might just ring a bell. So it's no surprise that Sana is terrified of him and assumes he probably knows how to use Hokuto Shinken. Although Sana starts off as meek and a little bit cowardly, afraid of getting hurt or colliding, gradually he grows more confident and when he gets into football because of his nearly superhuman speed, Sana gives his team the Damon Devil Bats, an advantage on the playing field, and nowhere is this more valuable than against the Odro White Knights and their strongest player, Shin. In fact, Sena is the only one able to break through Shin's special move, the Spear Tackle. Both Sena and Shin view each other as their own greatest rivals. Sena is wary of Shin because of his overall strength and experience, and Shin views Sena as a threat because of his formidable speed. But like with most rivals, both of them push the other to train and improve even more. Shin is driven to work on his speed after Senna breaks through his spear tackle, and Senna pushes himself to achieve the same level of game sense as an experienced player like Shin. They both respect each other, and perhaps no other pair embodies a good rivalry between opponents as much as Senna and Shin do. As our number 6 pick, we have Haruko Nanase and Rin Matsuoka from Free. But when it comes to Rin and Haru, this is one of those rivalries where one party completely resents the other, although Rin's hatred for Haru would later prove to be terribly misguided. Rin and Haru started out as childhood friends and friendly rivals competing with and against each other. Rin's dream was to swim in a relay team with Haru, but after he moves to Australia, he doesn't get the chance until years later, but at that point, things have long since changed, especially Rin and his outlook on swimming. When he comes back in all of his scowly, angsty glory, he vows to beat Haru in a race and prove once and for all who's the best. He eventually succeeds, but Haru spirals into a depression afterward, and even Rin starts to feel like his victory was hollow. To put it lightly, Rin has a one-sided obsession with beating Haru and is always striving to prove himself the better swimmer to get closer to his dream of competing in the Olympics. His desire to be the best led to him to feeling insecure and inferior to Haru. He's left feeling resentful of Haru's seemingly indifference for the sport, though in truth, Haru had quit competitive swimming after Rin himself quit. Later, after all the misunderstandings are resolved and Rin finally admits that all he wanted to do was swim at the relay with his friends again, Rin and Haru started a healthier and definitely friendlier rivalry. Rin even admits that Haru inspired him to become a better swimmer, and Rin helps Haru realize his dreams for the future. Now you can hardly imagine one without the other, and their promise to keep swimming with and for each other lives on. Ad time. Oh no, Halloween is just around in a couple of weeks and I don't know how I'm gonna dress up this year. Don't worry, I know just the perfect website where you can buy the perfect costume to impress me. I mean. 
everyone at the party. It's CosplayFTW.com. It has hundreds of different cosplays of all the popular anime, movies, video games, and more. But I thought cosplay was just for anime conventions. Not really. You can use it for parties, cool photos, and funny videos. But I live in another city, in another country, in another dimension. Will it arrive before Halloween? Just be sure to order soon, because it can take a couple weeks. But it will get to you. Thanks Cosplay FDW, now I'm no longer a generic anime guy, I can be a protagonist. End of ad. Entering our top 5, we have something a bit different. In 5th place, we have Chihaya Ayase and Shinobu Wakamiya from Chihaya Furu. This is definitely a sport that you might never have heard of before, let alone thought that there would be an anime about it. Chihaya Furu is an anime about Karuta, a Japanese card game where players attempt to take their cards on their opponent's side that contains the last lines to a poem that is read aloud to them. Hey, if poker can be considered a sport, so can Karuta. It may sound less flashy than some of the other picks at first, but watching Chihaya Furu might just change your mind about it. Chihaya and Shinobu are both female Karuta players competing for the title of Queen, a rank that is only given to the best female Karuta player in the entire nation. The reigning queen, Shinobu, is known as the youngest queen in history, and her cold and calculated personality greatly intimidates Chihaya. Chihaya, meanwhile, is an insanely talented player who has a great love for Karuta. She is more than qualified for the queen match, but gets beaten by Shinobu every time they play against each other. Although she loses out to Shinobu, she is one of the very few players that Shinobu takes seriously, as everyone else just bores her, or is just too easy. Where everyone else gets quickly discouraged when playing against Shinobu, Chihaya holds out till the very end and never gives up even when the odds are stacked against her, piquing Shinobu's interest and actually making her excited for a match. Chihaya herself sees Shinobu as a rival that she has to face and win against to become queen and she has great respect for her and her skills. Outside of matches, however, Chihaya tries her best to be friendly with Shinobu even with Shinobu's icy personality and the two have similar interests like weird mascots whose merch they both own. While Karuta might not seem like the most active sport to watch, the heated rivalry between Chihaya and Shinobu might just get you hooked on it. At number 4 we have Eijun Sawamura and Satoru Furuya from Ace of Diamond. Who better to compliment the loud and hot-tempered Sawamura than the cool and collected Furuya? Furuya's strength and skill in pitching makes him an essential member of the team, especially after he's dubbed the Ace. On the other hand, Sawamura has a strong will and cheeriness that comes in handy when the team's morale is low. He calmly steps up to the mound with his energetic catchphrase, Balls will come flying your way! Thank you for defending, or some variation of the sort, which was at first negatively received by his teammates as annoying, but became morale boosting and endearing later. Sauramuru and Furuya contrast each other in an almost poetic way, with Furuya envying how easily Sawamura can befriend and communicate his feelings with the team. At the same time, Sawamura wants his strengths to be recognized by his teammates the same way everyone trusts Furuya's skill as the ace. On the outside, Sawamura and Furuya don't appear to get along, always arguing and pointing out each other's flaws, even appearing to be jelly of what the other has that they lack. But despite all the fighting and bickering, these two still acknowledge each other's talents and each other's worth as rivals, although they probably die before they admit it out loud. As the series goes on, they even grow closer as friends and regularly exchange advice. Above all, they never really seem to resent each other and are actually glad to see each other's improvement, such as when Sawamura challenges Furuya for the title of Ace. You probably won't find another pair quite like them anywhere else. Entering our top three, we have Hanamichi, Sakuragi, and Kaede Rukawa from Slam Dunk. This classic sports anime about basketball is often credited for bringing sports anime to the mainstream in the modern era. One could even say that plenty of rivalries between characters in sports anime have their basis on the rivalry between Sakuragi and Rukawa. Sakuragi is loud, hot-headed, and a rookie to the sport, initially only getting into basketball to simp for the girl he likes. In contrast, Rukawa is calm, level-headed, and extremely skilled player who also happens to be the cool Chad crush of the girl Sakuragi likes, making him not only Sakuragi's rival on the court, but also his rival in love. 
Sakuragi and Rukawa's hot and cool-headed dynamic could very possibly have been the blueprint for all sports anime rivalries between teams. Just like with many other rivals on this list, Sakuragi and Rukawa just can't seem to get along. Sakuragi envies Rukawa for his looks and skills, while Rukawa berates Sakuragi for his rookie level of basketball skills. Sakuragi's rivalry with Rukawa for Haruko's affection is entirely one-sided, though. These two get along like oil and water. They simply do not mix on or off the court. But as Sakuragi gradually improves, Rukawa begins to see the potential in him, and when it comes to competing for Haruko's love, there is no greater motivation for Sakuragi than his rival. While neither of them are likely to admit it, they do have some level of respect for each other and recognize each other's strengths. At one point, Rukawa is even willing to set aside his dislike for Sakuragi to allow him to score the winning shot. And you have to admit, on the court, they do synergize pretty well. Next at number 2, we have Yusuke Makishima and Chimpachi Toto from Yawamushi Pedal. You probably won't find a rivalry as friendly or good-natured as this one. Coming from rival schools and having the same specialities in climbing steep terrain, it's only natural that characters as competitive as Makishima and Toto would form a rivalry. But the rivalry isn't based on a dislike for each other or desire to prove who is better. Toto generally wants to see both himself and Makishima improve by constantly challenging each other to push their own limits. We use the term rivalry for these two quite loosely, since neither of them view each other as enemies. And Toto says himself that he's incapable of really hating his rival. Even though the point of a rivalry is to surpass someone no matter what it takes, Toto would rather have both of them complete on equal terms, and not just in cycling. Makishima and Toto could make a competition out of anything, from sauna battles and even to fashion, and whatever the case, Toto always makes sure to check up on Makishima before a match, always making sure that he's in top condition and that circumstances as equal as possible. Despite what his borderline arrogant personality might suggest, Toto does care about people, even his rival Makishima, and can be surprisingly considerate. Makishima in turn respects Toto and doesn't view him with hostility or dislike either. Toto even labels them as best rivals, a play on best friends and rivals. This term perfectly encapsulates what makes their relationship great. The willingness to challenge each other and beat each other in a fair fight, as well as the desire to see each other improve while still maintaining a friendly relationship both professionally and personally. Toto even admits that he is who he is because of his rivalry with Makishima. And we're sure Makishima would agree. Their relationship is truly nothing short of a wholesome and healthy friendship, rivalry, best rivalship. And finally, our number one pick for the top 10 sports anime rivalries is Shoyo Hinata and Tobio Kageyama from Haikyuu. If you saw this one coming, then you're right. We can't have a list about this specific topic without including Hinata and Kageyama. Like most rivals, Hinata and Kageyama start out disliking each other and bickering constantly. They are polar opposites, and whose only commonalities are their love of volleyball, their stubbornness, and their poor academic performances. Hinata is the exuberant, rough-around-the-edges rookie whose passion for the sport outweighs his skill while Kageyama is the cold and talented genius who has trouble communicating and trusting his teammates. At first glance, these two look like they wouldn't be able to play on a team together, let alone become close friends, and that's precisely the case when they both end up at Karasuno. But as they and their teammates soon learn, Hinata and Kageyama are much more compatible than they seem, and they serve to bring out the best in each other. In Hinata, Kageyama finds a trustworthy teammate who can keep up with his demands and will always be there to hit every ball he sets, while Hinata finds a partner in Kageyama who sets the ball to the exact point Hinata can hit. The two of them quickly establish themselves as a unique and formidable duo because of their freak quick. But even though they have to work together as a team, they never stop competing to see which of them will be the last one standing. This competitive nature could be what makes their rivalry so great to watch. You can't help but root for them and want them both to get better. However, they leave us torn because even though we want to see the two get better, we don't want the other to lose either. Hinata finds no greater motivation to improve than to fulfill the promise he made with Kageyama the very first day they met, to one day get strong enough to defeat him. Although they both rely on each other in Karasuno and now share the same ambition of taking their team to the nationals, there is still an underlying drive, most prominently seen in Hinata, to surpass each other, a greater ambition to meet each other on opposite sides of the net just like the day they first met and prove once and for all who is the strongest. 
It's this exhilarating passion and competition that make Hinata and Kageyama's rivalry truly one for the ages and one that we simply can't wait to see more of. That rounds off our top 10 sports anime rivalries. Which one was your favorite? Let us know if they're on our list or if we missed them altogether in the comments below. And we'll see you in the next one. Nintendo pillow and oh my god, it's my favorite thing ever. And then I got a pillowcase. Guess who's on? That's fucking pillowcase. It's Kudo and Kenma's on the other side. I'm, they're so cute. I love them. And then the smaller stuff, I got a Suki and a Yamaguchi pin. Ah, I love them. Love them. And then I got a Hinata keychain. Look how cute it is. And then the lanyard. Oh my god, it's literally the prettiest thing I've ever seen. And um, yeah, long story short, you should buy this. It's from K-pop FTW and. Oh my god, it's so worth the money! <laughs>